Hi, this is Keneally. Let's talk about the equilibrium force. The equilibrium force is the opposite of the resultant, where the resultant is what would happen if two forces pull on an object, which way the resulting force would go. That's why it's called the resultant. The equilibrium is a force that would cancel out the resultant, thus canceling out the other forces on that object in order for it to remain setting still or static. So, for example, if I have a force of 10 newtons acting at zero degrees, so remember the coordinate system for forces, zero, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. So if I have a force at zero degrees, and I want to cancel it out, then my equilibrium would be in the opposite direction, same magnitude, but opposite direction, so it would be at 180 degrees. So those two would cancel each other out, and there's no net force. So the equilibrium creates a net force of zero on your object. So if I've got one, let's say, here's my coordinate system. Zero degrees, 90, 180, 270. And let's say I have a resultant force of 50 newtons, and it's at an angle of, let's call that 110 degrees. My resultant force is that. My equilibrium will be the exact same magnitude, but opposite direction. So 50 newtons, and we add 180 degrees to that. So we add 180 to that, so this will be at 290 degrees. That would cancel out that vector. But a lot of times, they don't ask you for the equilibrium. They've got a more subtle way of asking that question. So let's look at a problem. All right, here we've got two ropes tied to a box. So I'm going to draw my box. We've got a rope at zero degrees, 25 Newton tension, one at 90 degrees, 40 Newtons of tension in it. So the resultant should be off in that direction. Okay. Now that's a picture of what's going on. Let's draw a vector diagram. Now a vector diagram is not a free body diagram. A free body diagram labels all the forces acting on the object. Simply a vector diagram just labels the vectors that you are concerned about. And so for this case, I'm going to have my, I always like to do the horizontal one first. Let's do it up here. And where that vector ends, the next vector begins. Obviously I'm not drawing these to scale. We've got a good right triangle there, and I want to find the resultant. The resultant always goes from where you start to where you end, and we got to figure out the angle. So just like what we did in a previous video, r squared equals a squared plus b squared. So that's 25 squared plus 40 squared. So if we do that, 25 squared plus 40 squared gives us 2,225. There we go. And I want to take the square root of that. So R is 47 point, let's call it 17 newtons. Okay. And then to get the angle, we need to use tangent. Tangent of theta is opposite 
over adjacent. So tangent of theta would be 40 over 25. So that is 1.6. So we want the angle though. So we take the inverse tangent or arc tangent of 1.6. And that gives us 57, well, let's, let's just call it 58 degrees. That'll make things easier for us. So 58 degrees. So this vector, that resultant, is 47.17 newtons at 58 degrees. Now the equilibrium would be in this direction, okay? another 180 degrees, but saying magnitude. So to figure out the equilibrium, well, it's really quite easy after you got this to this point. It's going to be the same magnitude, but we're going to add 180 degrees to the angle. So if we add that in, plus 180, we get 238 degrees, and that would be the equilibrium. So all you have to do is after you find the resultant, keep the same magnitude and add 180 degrees to the angle, and that would be the equilibrium. That would prevent this box from moving because we'll have a force going back this direction that will cancel out that resultant going in this direction and that would prevent that box from moving if it was already stationary. All right, thank you very much. Tune in for another video.